Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. K. M. Julfikar Hassan, lecturer, Department of Pathology. Today I will discuss about the topics of edema. What is edema? The accumulation of fluid in tissues or body cavities is called edema. Pathophysiology of edema. The following causes disrupt the balance and results in increased movement of fluid out of vessels. Number one, elevated hydrostatic pressure and diminished colloidal osmotic pressure. Now, pathophysiology of edema. In case of heart failure, increased hydrostatic pressure causes edema and decrease renal blood flow activation of the renin angiotensin system, retention of sodium and water and increased blood volume and causes edema. On the other hand, malnutrition, hepatic synthesis, nephrotic syndrome, decrease plasma albumin and decrease plasma osmotic pressure causes edema. Now, causes of edema. Increased hydrostatic pressure. Hydrostatic pressure due to impaired venous return and arterial dilatation. Examples of impaired venous return. Congestive heart failure, constative pericarditis, ascites due to liver cirrhosis, venous obstruction or compression due to thrombosis or external pressure, lower extremity inactivity with prolonged dependency. Examples of arterial dilatation, heat, neuro humoral dysregulation reduced plasma osmotic pressure due to protein losing glonomepathies nephrotic syndrome liver cirrhosis malnutrition protein losing gastroenteropathy and lymphatic obstruction due to inflammatory neoplastic or surgical post irradiation sodium retention due to excess salt intake with renal insufficiency, increased tubular reabsorption of sodium, renal hypoperfusion, increased renin angiotensin aldosterone secretion. Inflammation also causes edema, acute inflammation, chronic inflammation, angiogenesis. Now clinical features of edema. Edema is most commonly seen in subcutaneous tissue, the lungs, and the brain. Subcutaneous edema can be diffuse or more conspic conspicuous in region with high hydrostatic pressures. Its distribution is often influenced by gravity. It appears in the legs when standing and the sacrum when recumbent. A feature termed dependent edema. Finger pressure over markedly edematous subcutaneous tissue displays the interstitial fluid and leaves a depression, a sign called pitting edema. Edema resulting from renal dysfunction often appears in the eyelids. Periorbital edema is thus a characteristic finding in several renal disease. Brain edema can be localized or generalized depending on the nature and extent of the pathologic process or injury. The swollen brain exhibits narrowed sulci and distended gyri, which are compressed by the unyielding skull. Effusions involving the pleural cavity called hydrothorax, the pericardial cavity called hydropericardium or the peritoneal cavity hydroperitoneum or ascites are common in a wide range of clinical settings. Today is my topics all about. Thank you everyone for listening with patience.